Number 51. Shoveling snow can be extremely taxing because the arms have such a low efficiency in this activity. Suppose a person shoveling a footpath metabolizes food at the rate of 800 watts. Letter A. What is her useful power output? All right. So on the table on the upper right, uh, let's locate, if we can, the efficiency, uh, efficiency of shoveling. So here's shoveling. Here's the efficiency. So it's basically 3%, right? So now I'm thinking in terms of, so for letter A, I'm thinking in terms of the efficiency formula down here on the bottom right, all right? That tells me that the efficiency of a certain process is equal to the useful work put out divided by the energy put into that process. So the efficiency here was for shoveling, it's 3%. So I'd have to convert that to a decimal, so that'd be 0.03. And now I'm finding, right, it says, what is her useful power output? So in order to do this, I have to first find the uh, work put out, right, or the amount of power put out. It doesn't matter whether it's work or whether it's in terms of uh, energy. Just know that this is a unitless ratio. So if you put joules on the top, then joules are on the bottom. You could also do this, though, for power on the top and power on the bottom, all right? So in this particular case, let me just change the wording of this. It's not really the work put out, but it's going to be the power out divided by the power put in. And it says the rate, you know, tells us in the problem, it says the rate of food metabolism was 800 watts. So that's the power put into this process. So that's 800 watts. Okay. So to find then the power put out, it's just going to be across multiplication here, right? 0.03 times 800. So this works out to be 24. Right, so 24 watts of power is the output, all right? So that takes care of letter A. Let's look at letter, let's look at letter B. So how long will it take her to lift 3,000 kilograms of snow, 1.2 meters? All right, so now what do we know? Well, we know her power output, right? We do know the power. They're asking us how long, and they're giving us some mass and a height. Hmm, sounds like energy, right? So maybe, just maybe, we're going to use this particular formula over here on the right-hand side. That says that, so now for letter B, that power, remember, is equal to the change in energy of a certain object, okay, divided by the time it took for that object's energy to change. So she is outputting a value of power, right, equal to 24 watts, okay? The um, change in energy now is what in this problem? Actually, you know what? Let me not even put in the values yet. Let me just leave this as power. What type of energy is this being described in the problem? What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is when you take a mass and lift at a certain height, what's that? What energy did you change? You changed its potential energy, right? So really what I'm going to say is the numerators more specifically should be a change in potential energy, okay, over time. So that's great. Now let's start. We, we want to solve this for time right there. Asking us how long. So let's just quickly solve it for time. Just switch the numerator here with the denominator. Easy enough. That's changing the potential energy there over then the power. So the time should simply be the change in potential energy, which remember is mg times the final height minus the initial height. Okay. But I take my initial as the uh, zero reference point. So therefore uh, increased its height by 1.2 meters. All right, so that's going to be the final height. And then I'll just multiply that by the mass and gravity. So just to save a little space, let me just write that in here. So the mass of the object was 3,000. Gravity was 9.80. Not was, it is. It is 9.80. And the final height here is 1.20. And that's all now going to be divided by the her power output, which we saw before was 24. So now I can easily calculate the time it's going to take. So 3,000 times 9.8 times 1.2 all divided by 24. So this works out to be 1,470, and that'll be in terms of seconds, right? That's the time that gets spit out of that equation when we use uh, joules and uh, watts. Okay, so that takes care of letter B. And now letter C, how much, so how much waste heat transfer in kilojoules will she generate in the process? All right, so now, Basically, what we have to realize is we're basically going back to uh, letter A, okay? So letter A said that there's a 3% efficiency, right? That's what it told us. And, you know, she metabolized 800 units, or not units, but watts 
of power from food. But she only, right, of those 800, she was only able to output 24 of them. So if I asked you now, how many watts of power were then not used in this process, you'd say, oh, yeah, it should just be a subtraction between the two, right? And yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right. So the total amount of energy she metabolized was 800 watts. I shouldn't say energy, right? The total amount of power um, that she metabolized was 800 watts. And only 24 of that was dedicated then to useful power, right? To, to shovel the driveway or whatever, or footpath. So therefore, the remainder here of 800, right? 800 minus 24 was left for 700, 776 watts. This 776 watts is now the power going to heat, all right? It's kind of like wasted energy, more or less. It's not very efficient, right? So of all this 800 watts of power that she metabolized, all of this, or 97% of it, went to waste, right? Went to waste heat transfer. Now, this is in terms of power. And again, we want to know how much in kilojoules, okay? So therefore, they want me to find an energy. I know the power here. And remember, she's doing this for this amount of time. So guess what? I can use my power formula, right? I'm going to use this power formula again. Okay, so it says that the power is equal to uh, change in energy over time. And we're looking to find the energy now, right? So it tells us that energy is equal to power multiplied by time. So all I need to do is know the power, right? This is the wasted power. That's the 776 watts multiplied by the time. And we found it already, 1,470 seconds. So the energy here, the wasted energy that is, is going to be 776 multiplied by 1420. Oh no, excuse me. 1470, right? Hold on, guys. I just got to go back and check because I can't read my own handwriting. Yeah, 1470. So if I said 1420, I do apologize. This should be a 7 in here. So let me just fix that. That is a 7. Okay. And this answer down here should also be a 7. Okay. So. And when we do that multiplication here in terms of the energy, uh, we get 1.14. So let's write that 1.14 times 10 raised to the, what do we get? 3, 6 times 10 raised to the 6 joules, right? We're not done yet because they wanted it in kilojoules. So just simply divide that by 1,000. All right. And the energy now should be 1.14 times 10 to the third kilojoules. All right, and that's the final answer. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, why not hit the like button? That'd be cool. <sighs> Take care now. Appreciate it. Bye.